Hi everybody, I am Nelson Fisk and we are here at AUSA 2019 at Textron Systems booth where we have the Textron Systems and Ripsaw team. They're unveiling for the first time the Ripsaw M5 and we're lucky enough to have Mike Howe and Sean Beatty with us and I'd like to ask them to, to go ahead and tell us a little bit about their terrific vehicle. Well, we're super excited to be here. This is an unveiling of really the world's first robotic combat vehicle that we've developed, and it is completely electric hybrid drive. It, it can be completely silent, and it's very modular. So you can actually can configure this vehicle to different re uh, requirements and mission sets for the U.S. Army. It's got extremely good performance, and it's a very aggressive uh, mobile platform. So it's really it's a really unique platform. There's nothing else like it in the world. Great, thank you. And Sean, would you like to add? Yeah, I would, and, and what the M5 gives us is a, a product that allows us to help work with the Army to shape how robotic combat vehicles can really influence and shape the battlefield as we move forward. And working through that process with them and collaborating with them as we go solve that problem together, the M5 allows us to shape, flex, and attack that problem head on. I mean, combat, robotic combat vehicles is what we do every day. We're out there putting uh, aircraft and ground vehicles in soldiers' hands and dirty and dangerous situations, and we're bringing that to the our robotic combat vehicle, integrating that capability and getting it into the field fast, quickly, and effectively. I noticed from the, from the demo that it's got a, a, a significant uh, uh, capability for uh, engineering as well, and uh, UAVs as well as ROSE systems, so would you like to comment about that as well? Sure, so one of the unique things with the Ripsaw M5 platform is it's very modular and it allows you to set it up with different applique kits, depending on the mission. So you can put an AUS, you can put a, an aerial system on it, you can put a ground robotics marsupial, we call this the marsupial. This is a robot that actually comes out of the front of M5, and that allows for a ground uh, SA. Um, it allows for an RWS. So if you take this weapon off, you can take this weapon right off, and it's a flat deck, and it allows the user to use it in many different scenarios. Yeah. And from Textron system standpoint, we work on air, land, and sea. And we kind of identified the value of bringing these systems together to solve a big problem. So being able to stretch the legs of these vehicles, put them in the right spot with enough information to understand where they are in the world and how they can be effectively deployed, and make, enabling that soldier to make that decision, that's what we do. And then, you know, unmanned aircraft systems integrate into the vehicle, uh, persistent comms, being able to reach and see over difficult terrain, and be able to give the awareness well beyond what you can see from the front of the vehicle, but all around the vehicle. Now, this vehicle has no human in it. This vehicle has no human. This is a complete robot. Now also, it's also a completely electric drive. So it's electric hybrid, so we can charge on the run, but we can also make a silent mode. So this vehicle can literally just silently creep through the woods up to speeds over 40 miles an hour and do it very quietly. It gives that the warfighter, our U.S. soldier, a huge advantage. This is the future. I was going to ask about the uh, remote uh, weapon station and what you might be able to employ in that in that uh, modular setup. So the flat deck of the M5 is 59 and a half inches off the ground, which gives it the posture and stance to effectively deploy weapon systems. And its flat deck allows us to basically change a plate out and use our open architecture from the standpoint of managing the safety and the critical systems on board to put in the MCT-30, 30 by 173 millimeter, 30, you know, medium caliber cannon, all the way to any aircraft or um, counter UAS systems and uh, mine clearing uh, line charges that allow us to affect both the air and ground uh, with this system. So this is one platform that will do everything. And that's the key now. No longer does the U.S. Army have to focus on buying one system for one mission, one system for one mission, and another system for another mission. We've evolved beyond that. We've evolved to let to let one vehicle do everything. This vehicle in this weight class can do most of those missions and can be configured, saving costs to the U.S. military and um, allowing for um, us to make a vehicle this module. What do you think about uh, deployability? Uh, obviously, it's a lot smaller than a, a main battle tank. Yep. You can get a certain number on uh, different types of aircraft. I don't know if you can maybe comment on that. Sure. Yeah, so uh, C-130 internal transportability of uh, the light and medium variants allowing to roll on, roll off within 15 minutes. I mean, that, that's a hard challenge to do, to be able to hit the ground running and shooting right up front. That, that's a, an area that this vehicle allows to fill a need with tactical transport where you're not pulling in larger strategic manu uh, maneuver forces uh, to get this vehicle in into the fight quickly and effectively. And I, and I want to talk a little bit about the performance of a Ripsaw and the aggressive mobility that this vehicle has the aggressive mobility that really 
Ripsaw is the only vehicle in the world to have an attract vehicle stance. I'm going to give you some numbers. An M1A can weigh up to 120 to 130,000 pounds. It has a 1,500 horsepower jet engine in it, or turbine, sorry. This Ripsaw weighs 14,000 pounds, one-tenth, and has, will have up to 1,600 horsepower. So we're talking about real aggressive mobility that allows a soldier to use this in different ways and to be more effective on the battlefield. Combine that with the effective modularity, combine that with the scalability. We can scale this up, we can scale it down, depending on the mission. It is, it is really the, the future of where we see it going. If, by the way, if, uh, if they wanted to change something out modular-wise, uh, take the turret off and put another configuration, about how long would you think that might take if they were in the field? I know you can't do a turret maybe in the field, but yep. it, to how, how long does something like that take? It depends on the actual weapon system itself, but we're, we are, we're focusing on making a, a tool-less engineering, tool-less modifications, and we're focusing on within hours, not days, not weeks, literally within hours, you can take this weapons platform off, you can put a crows on it, or you can put a ID defeat system on it. This whole nose, it's so modular, this whole nose comes off, and there's a bulkhead behind this nose that then you can bolt other things to. So it's very, very, very modular. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. It's a new level of modularity. In our vision is to drive that configuration and that mission adaptability to the operator level, to take it to the forward point of use so that they can make a decision, you know, fight to fight, day to day, um, so they don't have to send it back to the depot to make those choices to help best attack the, and defeat the threat. Hey, thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And uh, Textron Systems and the Ripsaw team look like they got a winner. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.